time having arrived, I call this special meeting of the Brockton City Council to order. Will you all please join me in standing and saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and to the, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, councillors. Mr. Clerk. Item number one, call of the meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Amen. Item number two, officer's return of notice. Accepted and placed on file. Item three, hearing. Ordered that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy for fiscal year 2023 in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Written and oral arguments will be taken at this time. All of the related matters. Time having arrived, I declare this public hearing open. Mr. Clerk, uh, the clerk has the speaker's list, and we've set a four-minute speaking time for uh, anyone who'd like to come up. Uh, so, Mr. Clerk. I have Bob Ford, Bonnie Street in Brockton. Good evening, Mr. Ford. Prepare a little speech. Uh, uh, all right. The horse has already left the barn. It's futile to discuss the factor with nearly $20 million, um, $20 million hike in this year's budget. The compensation adjustment across the board, including the present council, while well, the rest of us in the re real world fight gas and grocery prices daily. Uh, instead of dwelling on this, I'd like to look forward to next spring to the 2024 budget. And I'm recommending that the council get it in a more timely manner. Bring in a person well versed in finance to look at what's in it and make cuts on frivolous portions of it. Make adjustments for seniors living on a fixed income. And uh, also do some more in depth study. Uh, a few months ago, one of our councillors made reference to the city swimming in cash. Let's have this outside. Uh, uh, outside order to take a look at how much cash is swimming around the city and put it to good use. Give you a quick example. Last year, uh, the auto excise tax that you pay the city of Brockton, they collected almost $11 million. And I imagine that's just sitting there in one of the funds. You know, maybe put it to use, start, start working on the roadways. Uh, and also to the folks who don't vote, pay attention to what's going on. If you don't think your council is doing the right thing, Find somebody who will. Get behind him or her, change the face of this body, and vote the incumbent out. And sadly, with a 15 to 20 percent turnout, nothing will ever change in this city. You know, the general cry is you can't fight City Hall. I did seven years ago when I won. It was a, it was a, it was a big fight, but I, I, I wound up victorious. You can fight City Hall. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Clerk? I don't have any other signed in. I do have some communications. Is there anybody, would you like to check, see if Is there's there anybody, anybody else? else who would like to say anything during the public hearing? No? In that Mr. case, Clerk? I do have a, a letter, an email letter from Michelle Henson, Adley Street in Brockton. I am in favor of the residential factor shift of 175%, which will reduce the residential property tax rate in Brockton and then requesting this email be entered into the record, which it shall. Accepted and placed on file. Accepted and placed on file. I have another email from Jamal Braithwaite from Brockton. I am in favor of the residential factor shift of 175%, which will reduce the residential property tax rate in Brockton. Accepted and placed on file. And that's all I have for public speakers. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Counselors, let the record show as a little point of pride that all community input this uh, year has come from Ward 6, the <laughs> civic-minded ward. You noticed. Seeing nobody else, yeah, right. the public portion of the hearing is closed. Mr. O'Donnell, Mr. Clarkson, if you uh, have any, any statements, perhaps in answer to any of the questions raised. Thank you, Mr. President. Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Just very briefly, uh, this is the annual meeting uh, for the city council to 
set the residential factor. For those folks at home that may be watching, uh, cities and towns in Massachusetts have the opportunity to split the tax rates. Some of them have the same rate for residential, commercial, and industrial property. Others choose to shift that rate. Traditionally here in Brockton, the City Council has chosen each year to shift that rate in favor of lowering the burden on residential taxpayers. Uh, the maximum amount you can do that is 175%, and so that shifts the rate, places more of the burden on commercial and industrial, and does give relief to residential property owners. So uh, it was by, I believe, two years ago, you opted for the first time to go to that full 1.75 shift, and the recommendation, as you'll hear from the Chairman of the Board of Assessors in a moment, is to remain at that 1.75 level. Uh, it's important to note that the tax levy, regardless of what you do this evening, the tax levy remains the same. You determine that, uh, well, the tax levy is determined by formula, uh, but the tax rate, of course, is determined by the setting of the annual budget. Uh, so tonight is not about that. That occurs in June when you debate and approve the annual spending plan for the city. This is as a result of that and how we should shift those numbers uh, to provide, if possible, relief to residential taxpayers. So I'm happy to answer any questions, but I would suggest first that we have the Chairman of the Board of Assessors, John O'Donnell, come up, and then he and I together can answer your questions. Thank you, Mr. CFO. Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, just a few points I'd like to make. Uh, uh, the city's total value is $11.2 billion, the largest ever in the history of the city. Uh, we had new growth this year of uh, 2.2 million, which is a very good year for uh, an interim year. And um, one other point I'd like to make is the residential percentage of the taxes has gone up to 85.52. So since fiscal year 17, it's gone up 5%, which is not a good thing. So I'll answer any questions we got. Uh, and the Board of Assessors do recommend sticking at 175. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Farwell, followed by Councillor Azak. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. O'Donnell, uh, the good news is that property values increased tremendously in, in Brockton, and yes. I think that reflects well on the city. Yeah, the residential class went up 13.26%. And we did some uh, research uh, this week, and it, it's going to go up again this next fiscal year, too. Uh, now, it, what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes and figure out uh, how we got to these valuations and help people understand the process. So we have, I think, what, 24,000 parcels? approximately in the city? 24, we have 27,000, 24 are residential. Okay, so, and it's the value of the property on January 1st, January 2022. Yes. So this past January. Using sales data from 2021. Okay, so my first question is, it, you piqued my curiosity at a recent meeting. You said that about 800 transactions were, I think, evaluated. So. Do we have a private vendor that takes those 800 transactions and then uses some algorithm to come up with a formula for this is what a single family home, three bedroom, two bath would be valued? Uh, t tell me a little bit about A, do we have a private vendor and B, how does it work? No, A, we do it all ourselves in house. The only time we use outside vendors is during a full revaluation year. And they do all the research. And, but so the sales are taken and they're certified by the state and then we put them into, into the um, camera system and it picks six, five sales for each property. So they pick randomly. They're, like the sales are coded by neighborhood. We have 20-something um, neighborhoods in the city that, and that's how, like residential, pro anything from one to three family are based on market, market approach and commercial industrials based on income and cost. All right, so, so the, the, the vendor would be the software program. Yeah, it's Taylor, Taylor Technology. Okay. Uh, I, I guess my concern is that when mortgage rates were lower, and they've gone up quite a bit, I think, this past year, yes. uh, 
literally houses were selling for more than, than listed uh, because there was such a demand. So what I'm worried about this year, I'm worried about the fact that when the tax bills hit, and you, you and I have spoken about this honestly, there are some people that are going to get hit with four to $700 or maybe more in tax increases. Uh, and that's just the way Prop 2.5 works when your property values go up and, and we, we apply the state tax laws. But I, I'm just concerned that that software program doesn't include us randomly going out and looking at someone's house and, and deciding that, wait a minute, maybe that's wrong. And I'll, and I'll give you an example of what bothered me, and I, I don't know if I can quickly pull it up on my phone, but I, I just happened to take a street, uh, and I looked at all of the properties on that street, and even though they were side by side, some went up 11%, some went up 9%, uh, and it was Brea Circle. So I, and I took a uh, snapshot of it, uh, and I just couldn't figure out how six or eight houses on the same street, same size lot, could vary in percentage increase the way that, the way it was printed on our, on our page. So maybe you can explain that to me a little bit. Some of those houses have sold up there, so they'd be based on the condition. So there's only certain factors that, that affect the value there. Bathrooms, bedrooms, uh, condition, and location. But sales price, too. Sale price, oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, so say we had a house uh, that we had never gone into, and there's plenty of those because people don't allow us in their homes, and it suddenly sells for 150000 over the assessed value. So automatically, that we can use MLS as a data, not, and it allows us, the DOR allows us to use it as an entry saying that we get into the property, we just base it on MLS. So that's going to affect the whole neighborhood. But, but it will also affect? That property would go up $150,000 yeah. in one year. Uh, how, how often are we required by law to physically go out and look at the different parcels of Once property? every 10 years. Once every 10 years. Yep, so, but if we make two attempts and we're not allowed in, that counts as entering the property. I'm sorry, that counts as what? As entering the property. Okay. And when did we do the last 10 we do it, years? We do it continuously. Chris Pike, who's here tonight, he goes out all the time. That's it. His main job is doing field work. He's out there every day, six hours a day, doing drive-bys, getting into properties. Okay, but we, don't, but we obviously don't have time to go inside. And the reason well, I we, ask... We, we try as, as often as we can, we go into a property. Because I, I, I do know, in talking with the fire department and others, there are a lot, an awful lot of properties that unfortunately have been converted from single family to an apartment downstairs or an apartment in the attic. And I, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying, folks, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop, is something just bothers me about the values we're applying this year because th there was a lot of drive to pay more for a house. I mean, people literally, I know when my daughter bought her house, I think, she had to go $20,000 over the asking price because Brockton is popular. But I'm worried that that skews the value of properties. That, that's what the market would be. That's what the, they'd consider the market to be. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, I hear you, Mr. O'Donnell. Uh, all right, well, thank you. I appreciate all the work, and we appreciate the advanced information. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Counselor. Counselor Azak. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Good evening. Um, first of all, thank you for the packet. As usual, it's full of information. This packet is available for residents to view online, correct? It's been online since October 25th. Oh, that's what I thought. So it's on the city website. Yes. It's filled with information, so it helps people understand the process. Yes. Um, so I, I appreciate your recommendation to stay at the 1.75. I think that's, you know, as a city councilor, I, that's, I look for your recommendations. Um, and I had a conversation with Mr. Pike earlier, just not to a few hours ago, and it's sad because residents are carrying the burden. Business owners, we want to attract more business because the only way we can relieve the residents is by increasing our... Um, tax base by our uh, commercial tax base so, which is so double-edged because I we try to do that I know I try to do that as a city council I try to be business friendly we want to bring industry in here so we can help our residents uh, you know so we can give relief to the residents and 
the businesses here so we can get a break on the commercial tax base. But I'm surprised not to see. I think this is the first year that Chris Cooney hasn't been here to kind of advocate for, you know, and I understand it. Well, our commercial rate's lower than all the abutting towns now. We're, we'll be roughly around 2606. Oh, okay. So we're, we're low. It's going to go down $2.14 uh, roughly. Well, that's good to hear. So that was going to come up to my next question. So what do you, I know we have to track more uh, different industry, different, um, you know, commercial business. What do you, I mean, what are your recommendations? What do we, what do we need to do? We need to redevelop property, like on the, like Kmart Plaza. Something has to happen down there. Uh, the fairgrounds has to be redeveloped. CSX. I mean, we don't have many much vacant land. That's our issue. We're a bedroom community. Mm -hmm. You know, we are 16,500 uh, of our parcels are single-family residential homes. Now, I understand that. So you mentioned a few of the big lots that are still available in the city. I know that there is a proposal that ha some of the councils have um, been contacted with a proposal for the fairgrounds. I mean, is that, have you, are you aware of it? Do you, I know it's just, pre it's a little yeah, premature, no, I but. I don't have much information on it, no. Because I'd like to see what's going to bring the maximum revenue to the city, and I, it's hard to do that when, you know, when people, not everybody's knocking at our door. I don't know how else to say it. You know, we, we want to get the There's a lot more fiber. businesses coming. There, there's a lot of activities, a lot of good things happening. Uh, there's a 150,000 square foot warehouse being developed on Industrial Boulevard right now. Uh, there's, there's, there's good stuff happening. Hopefully in the next uh, six or seven months, stuff will start getting out there, what's going on. And this is this will help bring in a higher tax base, help our yeah, residents. Yeah, that's what we need to do. I mean, because I think to, that's what everybody forgets. Like they they forget we're residents and we pay. You know that we're here and we're hit a lot of times with these, um, with the taxes. So approximately, how much is the average tax going up? Yes. Uh, if you just keep the rate the same, the average single family go up two hundred eighty-four dollars. Average two family go up one fifty-four. Uh, average three family would go up 328. Uh, commercial would go down 131. Industrial would go up uh, 1,140. Industrial will go up 1,140. That's the average. Um, and just curious because industrial, I th that's separate than the commercial rate. Yeah. Right? They well, it's the same rate. Same. It's the same it's, rate. It's industrial, just... commercial, industrial, and personal property. Okay. Um, so the commercial will be going down, the three, two family, three family. And when you give these amounts, that's per, that's for the year or the per, per quarter for the? That's for, for the year. For the year. Perfect. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thompson, followed by Councillor Rodriguez. Family. Uh, th thank you, Mr. President, uh, and good evening, uh, Mr. O'Donnell. Evening. And uh, we appreciate the work you do every year on this. It's uh, You always provide a lot of information that we can really delve into and, and try to better understand um, you know what 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 these uh, what the tax classification um, what it is and and really what the uh, practical effects are of it. So um, I know you just stated that uh, you and the board's recommendation is to remain at the uh, 1.75 yes. uh, shift. And so um, you know I, I do see that provides the most relief uh, to the to the residents of Brockton, and also I see that it, it's it's providing. Um, relief actually to our commercial businesses and and that's really kind of where uh, I'm getting confused at is is are we is it because the overall valuation of our commercial property is shrinking is that what's happening exactly so we're essentially losing commercial business it could be a point in time when the city if things don't change we could have a single rate it could be beneficial to have a single rate. Like the last single rate would be down to fourteen eighty seven this year, which is it's the lowest I've seen in nine years. That if we went one hundred percent and shared it across yeah, the board, across the board. And so you know, we we may look at this and say, "Wow, this is great. Um, we're reducing our commercial tax rate." Um, but in actuality, it, it seems like it's a symptom of a larger problem yeah, that we have here in Brockton. Uh, business to move here. 
because our rate's lower than West Bridgewater. Before, people would go to West Bridgewater, Industrial Park, up in Avon. Our rate's considerably lower than Avon. Right. I mean, looking at all the surrounding areas, we're, we're significantly lower, both on the residential side on and the commercial the, side. I mean, and the commercial we were side. up in the 30s, consistently in the high 20s into the 30s, and, that, and that's why Mr. Cooney isn't here tonight. He, he, how can he argue with the rate of, you know, in the tw low 26? Right, and, it, and when they, it was up in those 30s, 34-ish, yeah. it was a 156 yeah. uh, tr uh, shift during yes. that time. So it was a lot um, lesser of a shift to our business community, but they paid a much higher rate. Right. And I'm imagining that's because, um, well, it, it, that they had a higher valuation, right? It's the make, it was the makeup of the percentage between residential and commercial. So, <clears throat> like, since 17, uh, FY17, the commercial has shrunk 5% of the total tax levy. Right. Um, I, I see that. It says the average commercial is valued at $669,000. Um, so, I guess, uh, moving on to industrial, is it because we've, we've done a better job at maintaining our industrial base here in Brockton? I believe we've had more industrial sales. There's been some warehouses that sold, so it affects, you know, when we update the data. So that's the reason why it's... So, I know, you know, the city is, is constantly talking about bringing more business to Brockton, especially in our downtown area. Uh, we... we we, as you said, seem to be a bedroom community. Uh, we like to be a little bit more than that. We like maybe a bedroom community with plenty of amenities uh, for those who reside here, especially in our downtown. Um, it, it does seem that uh, both the city and the state and even the federal government offer a lot more incentives for residential development than they do for commercial development. And so one of the ways that we hope to be able to attract commercial development is by maintaining a uh, lower uh, tax rate. And uh, I see that we, we have done that, and so it seems like it's, it's two sides of a sword where we, we have a lower rate hoping to attract business, but, it, but the reason we have a lower rate is because we've lost a lot of business. Our base is shrinking, yes. So it just seems it's, we're in a conundrum a little bit here. Um, I, I, I agree that uh, the shift, uh, the 175 shift is probably the most appropriate uh, under these circumstances, but I think this council um, is really gonna have to start thinking about um, reducing that, I mean, well, well, I guess raising it, uh, to a, a higher shift maybe sometime in the future if we can uh, maintain our commercial base and try to grow that base so that way we can, um, you know, that, that we don't place too much burden on our commercial businesses uh, when in effect we're trying to attract more business here to Brockton. Um, how, how, how long would you say, because I, I remember you initially said once we hit 175, we're gonna, we're gonna have to sit there for a little while um, can you can you explain that a little bit more and how you see us we'll, turning out of this? Sure, we'll have to sit there until our commercial, until we start developing more commercial properties. Or we're going to head more towards a single rate. So say, we don't even have many pro, uh, residential development left in the city. There's like three subdivisions that are approved right now, and after that there's not much vacant, you know, there's one large parcel, besides that there's not much to be developed. And so from there on it's just going to be about increased valuation of all the properties. Yes. I mean, I, again, I believe 175 is probably, you know, the wise move at, at this point. Um, it will add less burden uh, to our, um, our residential uh, our residents, and it, will, um, it won't be as big of a burden on our commercial base, but it does look like our industrial base is, is really gonna take a hit here. You gotta remember the industrials are all large large warehouse space, stuff like that. So it's their different client than small commercial. Right, and hopefully they can shoulder it, but you know, absolutely. it's not just uh, the residents that, that are come upon tough times. I mean, inflation and uh, you know, COVID and, and all of that has affected everybody, um, business and industry and residents alike. So um, I appreciate your time, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rodriguez, followed by Councillor D'Agostino. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, how are you? Good, how are you? I just have a, a couple of quick questions for you. Um, when was the last time that we did an evaluation on commercial buildings? Uh, measuring, we did it uh, 2000, 2021. 2021. And is it done basically the same way as residential? Yeah, is we done did them well? off of uh, the imaging because it was COVID. The state allowed us to do it off 3D imaging and all that. So, but we, we do have plans to do a full measuring list in the next two years of all commercial industrial properties. Now, in your opinion, do you think our commercial uh, buildings or commercial businesses are evaluated at, at valued at this at the at a rate that you think is pretty accurate, or that I, it, I, it could actually be kind of tweaked one way or the other? I, I think the the properties that um, need to be looked at are the low end properties, like the mom the garages, small garages, things like that. As far as like the retail, Dunkin' Donuts, all of them, McDonald's, Burger King, all that stuff, the the um, box stores, we're right in line on them. We are. So, but it's the small so, stuff. So there is plan to kind of look into those others and just to bring yes. it up. Because, you know, it's, it's interesting that sometimes we, uh, we go into our text uh, apps within the, uh, the website and you've got some uh, commercial businesses paying taxes a lot less than what some residential uh, single family is paying for a business that's more profitable than a, a single correct. family person. I mean, because when you sit down and think about it, we residents cannot write off certain things that businesses can, you know, so it becomes a little more of um, a hit on the, on the residents than that it would be for, because you can increase your, let's say if your commercial business went up $50, you can write that off one way or the other to lower that $50 down. Yeah. Whereas- The last couple of years we had small increases, like one, 2% this year was, uh, what was it? It was um, seven, almost seven and a half percent on the commercial, and fourteen yeah. on the industrial. So hopefully we can look at the low end stuff and bring it all up. It'll help, but there's not many. Pro there's not, only seventeen hundred commercial industrial properties in the city. Okay. Well, that leads me to my next question. For instance, if you have a building that's, you know, three stories high, four stories high, and it has uh, three apartments up above and one commercial on the on the first level, how is that classified? It's, it's split rate. So the, all the commercials uh, get pays the uh, commercial rate, and then the apartments pay the residential rate. But but isn't the property owner that pays that? Uh, yeah, it's the same tax bill. They they get one tax bill, so we split out the commercial, and we split out the residential. Right. So so basically, so if you have something that's like a, a three, uh, let's say a three decker, that's two apartments and one commercial underneath, it mm -hmm. basically, the, the downstairs pays a commercial rate and, and then the upper, upper pays, floors will pay the residential. Pays residential rate. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, listen, I, I too would like to see, you know, us giving our residents a, a, a break. You know, we know that we don't have to say it here. We know what the tough times that everybody's going through with the, with the increases in expenses in this, in this country, to be honest with you. But at the same time, we have a city to run. Yes. Uh, you know, tough, tough choices sometimes need to be made. And uh, none of us, I mean, people forget that the 11 of us that sit up here, we all, we're all taxpayers. We're all paying taxes. Yeah. You know, we all paying taxes. And everybody else that works in, the, uh, in, this, in this government pays taxes as well. And I don't want to pay any more taxes, but sometimes we have absolutely no choice to do that because it's not like we get a break in our taxes. So uh, I am going to support the 175 because... I think it's that's the, the the bottom of the barrel, basically. Yeah, it's not like we can go any lower than this. I don't want to hurt the residents anymore. Yeah. So uh, in order to do that, I think that's what we're going to have to do, and then be able to speak with one voice, and let people know that we're setting the rates, not necessarily what they're paying in taxes, yeah. because what they're paying taxes is, is based on the value of their the value. property, not necessarily the rates. So sometimes when we hear people saying that we we increase taxes, we increase taxes. I think the market increases taxes. There's a lot of there's a lot that has to be explained that it hasn't. All we can do is set the uh, the uh, shift factor. the shift and whether or not you pay a little bit more in taxes because your property is worth more or less than everybody else. Yes. So thank you for all that you do and keep up the good work and thank, thank you. you, Mr. President.
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor D'Agostino. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Good evening. A um, couple of questions. And the first one, I, I may have already found the answer to my question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. <clears throat> when you were going through the average tax increase uh, for various different types of properties, um, you know, single family, 284, uh, and even the three family at 328, okay. But a two family average increase at 154, I was a little surprised to see that that was less than a single family. It happens. I mean, the, basically, the uh, if you look up above on the, it's the second to last page, you'll see that the, the uh, two families uh, values only only went up from 457 to 504. The average value. Second to last. Uh, after the uh, handout from the, you are this page here. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the oh, second to last page oh, of the sorry. packet. Right, and, and that was what I was suspecting when I was, when I was looking at this. Whereas, as Councilor Rodriguez knows, previous, the last five, six years, the twos and threes really took the hottest hit in the city. Okay, so those value increases have slowed down, yeah. at least on the it's, twos. It, it changes every year, it's amazing. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that's what I was suspecting when I saw the, the overall of the two family versus three, and the fact that there's about 500 less uh, three families exactly. and there are twos, yeah. but I just wanted to kind of confirm that and, and for anybody watching who kind of had that same thought of, wait a minute. Um, okay, and then we've talked about this a little before, but you've talk, you mentioned that um, there was a 5% shift and is that that's a loss of commercial properties. It's not is necessarily it a, commercial properties. It is uh, the residential is... Uh, Putting more into the levy, so the values it could be properties also, but yeah. so, so right. So there, there aren't. It's not that there's. I didn't know if maybe it was because the residential is growing right that much more than the commercial. Right, residential valuations are growing, and and the commercial valuations stagnant. are stagnant. More stagnant. Okay. All right. So we that don't have a lot of commercial industrial. You know, seventeen hundred is not a lot. Right. I just did, yeah. When when someone hears that, it may think, they may think we're losing businesses. Well, we're not. No. It's just that their property values value. yeah. aren't it, climbing at the same rate as our residential values. Exactly. Um, and then my my final question: We had talked last time you were in. Um, <clears throat> there was some discussion about the fact that there's a uh, option for seniors to get an abatement and, and or some kind of reduction. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken. I wanted to ask about that. And again, we had a very brief conversation about tax senior relief exemptions. For seniors. Hmm? Exemptions? Senior exemptions. I'm sorry. Yep. So we have two senior exemptions. Is uh, it's first one's it's called a 17D, just based on um, the person's uh, assets, total assets. It, it roughly yeah, the exemption is about $200. And the other one is uh, 41C. It's based on um, income and assets. So I believe we have a meeting, Councillor uh, Thompson. We're going to meet. They're going to try to change the uh, requirements and make them so more people can qualify. They're pretty. The, the guidelines are pretty tight that we currently follow. We're, they were changed under Mayor Kaplan, and we're going to look again to change them. We're meeting next week, I think. That, and that's exactly where I was where I was so going. So it's $750 for the, the asset one, and then they get another, they get their trash okay. abated out. So that's another $240? Yeah. 80. 280. 280 on the trash. Okay. Good. I'm glad that, that you and Councillor Thompson have, have set that up because that... That was one of the things that I, I wanted to ask about is yeah, it, obviously it, it, these values have increased. So I imagine it's safe to say the assets of these folks have increased as well. Well, it doesn't, the residence doesn't go into it, but it's the income. Okay. The, the got state guidelines on the income for people are, is really low. So other okay, communities so have changed it. So we're looking into changing it. So the asset, the house itself doesn't count doesn't as count, an asset. No, it's, no. it's okay. just what they'd have in a 401k or a pension or something like that. So it's other assets, other income. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but we can look at that to help. It, unfortunately, I'm sure with inflation, more of their income is being eaten up in just exactly 
keeping the lights Boy, on. Yeah. You know, so, okay. All right, awesome. I'm glad you guys are meeting on that, and I look forward to, to more discussion on it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Counselor. Mr. Chairman, I believe there's also a veterans exemption. Veterans, yeah, there's, uh, it's about six different veterans exemptions. They go from uh, $400 to someone that's 10% uh, to 99% disabled, and then 100% veteran gets a $1,000 exemption, and then there's widow exemptions, and there's about six different ones. Thank you. Counselor, uh, well, counselors, uh, I have no other speakers listed for the first round. Councilor Castro, and then we'll go into the second round if nobody else puts their hand up. Mr. O'Donnell, I've, I've had to explain to quite a few constituents recently about how our values have increased, and that's based on market. Market right? sales. And, and DOR certifies. Certifies okay. all our data. What if we didn't raise our values? We have to, right? We have to. We it's have master to. in the law. Right. And so failing to do that, the DOR, the Department of Revenue would come down on us. Yeah, they wouldn't certify. Right. We couldn't get our third quarter bills out, most likely. Right. And even if, even if we didn't um, change the values, as long as the budget goes up or our, our income doesn't, our revenue does stay stagnant, this, the um, tax is still going to go up. Right. And, and conundrum is a good word for it because we have new residents coming into the city paying a lot of money for homes. Yes. And they want services. Yes. In addition to all of our existing residents, um, people aging in place who need those services. If anything, we want to increase our services and to do so, our budget has to go up. It's simple math. Yeah. Really. Um, I wrote to you recently with the question of a constituent who asked me, now, no, no rolling your eyes, come on. He asked me if it's possible to arrange for a cap on property taxes after living here for a long time, 20 years, 30 years, 25 years. That's the same as not assessing a property. Right. There's a Homestead Act in Florida. I mean, that's based with that, but we don't have it in the state of Massachusetts. Right. Which helps all um, people who own or occupy. Right. The, the constituent who wrote who wrote and asked me this, a, a really great person and someone who has lived here more than 25 years, was looking for a break. And a lot of our residents are looking for a break. Well, they should contact our office and the girls will help them if they can qualify for the exemptions. That's the... The problem is that the, the, uh, the assets and the income are too low. Yeah. We all agree on that. Yeah, definitely. Right. 100%. And I have spoken with um, Rep. Cassidy about that. And could we bring something forward at the State House um, in the instances where they're, it, they're you know, it's based on state law? Um, I feel kind of helpless because we have a budget to cover, and yet I've got residents who are hurting. Any, any advice, any comments? I mean, right, I know. That's right, it's tough. Staff I, I, I just wanted to share the lectern with Mr. O'Donnell and talk about a conversation that we had, Councillor, that was similar to the one you had with your constituent, Mr. Brathwaite, who uh, did tell us it'd be, be late, just arrived, and Jamal sat with John and me for the better part of an hour recently, and, and we had the same conversation, and it's, I think, a good idea. The challenge is if we cap... Uh, assessments or cap tax payments, we either have to shift that burden sure, somewhere right. else within the levy, mm -hmm. uh, which would mean to other residential property owners or to commercial and industrial, or the Commonwealth, I think, if they wanted, if the legislature wanted to take a look at a program like that statewide, then they certainly could provide funding um, to address that gap. But the challenge is, uh, if we stay at the levy and we st uh, our budget remains the same, which I would submit it needs to, to provide the level of services you discuss, then that gap has to be filled. Again, either by shifting the burden or finding revenue from another source, which would be the Commonwealth. So it, it's something that John and I have discussed extensively. Um, 
it's not an easy solution because it would require additional funds and, and none of the options within the city, I think I'm fair to speak for, for John, are palatable because it would then shift the burden to someone else within the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor, uh, Councillors, keep doing that. Anyone who has not yet spoken who would like to speak for the first time? Seeing none, we'll go to the second round. Councillor Azak. Thank you. I won't be long, but Mr. O'Donnell, um, I share the sentiments of my colleague, Councillor uh, Nicastro. We sit here and feel helpless year after year because people believe a lot is in our hands, but we're really just setting the rate, and so much of it is out of our hands. But um, every year I ask the similar questions, which you already answered uh, a little bit, you know, with the different programs, whether it's senior exemptions or veterans. Um, and I know you, the ladies in your office are wonderful. Uh, everybody in the office is great, but I feel, is it possible to maybe get the information out to the Council on Aging or, you know, to help get, a lot of seniors don't know they could be eligible for some of these programs. So maybe- um, Janice refers people to all the time. She, she has great. all the information. Okay. And it's I mean, could we put it on the, like more on like the front page of our website or highlight it a little bit more? Because I know a lot of, seniors yeah. that have no idea and you know sometimes we I, I know I've referred people to your office as well yeah. and that's great but there are people I that don't know to, to call us yeah I can talk to IT and see if that would can. be great okay and whatever we can do it whether it's for the veterans or seniors and I know um, every year there's a small window where if a resident feels that they're being overtaxed they can file um, an abatement yes. please can you give us that information uh, to January people? 1st so the day the tax bills go out till uh, Wednesday, February 1st at 4.30, Pe uh, people can apply. They, everything's online. If, if they don't have on, online you know, access, they can call our office. We mail them out to the house. And um, if they can't get it back to us, it has to be postmarked by you. They couldn't send a FedEx or it has to be U.S. Postal Service by 4.30 on February 1st. So they have 30, 31 days basically to and then you review their applications. I know in the past you've, uh, and I don't want to state something that's incorrect, but I believe you've said the city can't go back and credit, but they, for future, uh, yeah, moving we forward. we will inspect every pro Anyone that calls, anyone that files an abatement, we'll go out to the property, inspect it, and uh, we just go from there. Okay, and sometimes, I mean, there, there are times oh, where definitely. they are credited. Yeah, if we haven't been in the house, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Any other counselors? Councillor Farwell. All right, Councillor Farwell. Just quickly wanted to follow up on a couple of comments made. You, and you've spoken about this before. It is really important to grow the commercial and or industrial tax base in the city. Am I, am, am, have I stated that correctly? Yes. All right, so, so here's, you talk about a conundrum. We've had two major projects apartment complexes. One, I think, at 132 Court Street that was on, I think, commercial and industrial property, and then another one recently that went before the ZBA up on North Main Street. And in both those instances, the ZBA, despite commercial and industrial zoning, decided, you know what, we think it's better to put housing there. We're going to grant the application that's been submitted. So as we shrink the available commercial <coughs> industrial property, Aren't we exacerbating that whole issue that... It definitely. I mean, there's only a... If it's an unapproved property, like a downtown property that's been vacant for 20 years, that's fine putting but, commercial but, uh, but residential... Just, and, and here's where I'm going with this. It just seems to me, because you were so honest to come out with that, it just seems to me that you and the council and the mayor and the ZBA, we ought to get on the same page. I mean, there should be a very clear stated philosophy that in order to help the residents of this city, in order to make the city viable, in order to increase economic development and generate jobs, we've got to get away from being so desperate that we'll grab a 150-unit apartment complex on Court Street when maybe over a little bit of time that property could have been marketed for commercial. light industrial commercial or do something because I'm just afraid that we're not all on the same page, and that, that's something that just drives me crazy. I mean, this, it, it, you Correct. live this every day. 
yes. you know what needs to be done in terms of helping out yeah. the revenue I mean, it's, it's picture for the city. Pretty and, obvious. And, and I just think, folks, that we, we need to have that. that I mean, there's, there are times when, you know, there's a 5,000 square foot lot on Main Street or Montel no. Street. That's fine to develop it commercial. Yeah. But if you have a 20,000 square foot lot on a C2 zone, it shouldn't be converted to residential. Yeah, I mean, you just, because there's only, there's, there's only a finite amount of property left. And if we keep yeah. converting it to housing, which really puts a strain on city services, schools, police, fire, et cetera, and doesn't generate any jobs, that is what worries me. So I'm, I'm so glad you were honest enough to come before us and say that, that we need to <coughs> increase our commercial and industrial base, but we can't keep giving away the property on which that very project might be located. And I, I just think, and I would hope uh, the mayor would, would uh, as chief executive officer, give some marching orders to people that this is what we want to do. It's in the long-term interest of the city. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Minicello. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Um, thank you for coming. In your um, experience privately, as well as obviously in your public uh, job with us, do you have a, a model in mind in terms of the a good balance of commercial, industrial, residential, um, personal, like so a, a balance, a, a formula that other successful or, or well-balanced communities? For a city this size, we yeah. should be 70-30. 70-30, okay. I'm kidding. And um, is Quincy more in, that, in line with no, that? Quincy has a lot of residential properties. Okay. Quincy's like, they're not as bad as we are, but they, I think they're like 80-20. Okay. And then but they have a lot more development, a lot more dense development. With regard to housing, you, you, you mentioned you know, housing. We're, we're developing a lot of housing right now in the city of Brockton. And some of those uh, units are one bedrooms. Can you talk to us a little bit about the um, burden or non-burden that smaller uh, housing units that have one bedrooms or one and a half um, or, or one bedroom in a den or something like that, something like that as opposed to three bedroom or more, what they, the impact on the services and, <coughs> and, and sort of burden on the city as opposed to benefit? I, I believe the properties that Joffrey, Anatole, and uh, Joe Gonzalez just developed they're renting to single, basically single people for the most part. So even the two bedrooms, is, like Joffrey told so me. So the likelihood of services and a drain on the city of Brockton is, is yeah, much it's less. It's not in the school system. Right. Okay. So, those, so if we're going to develop housing, those are the types of housing yeah, that would bedrooms. be beneficial to Brockton as opposed to yes. you know, larger structures three that, you know, two, three, four bedrooms, well, three, three bedrooms and up, really. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Nicastro. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell, um, I observe that sometimes it's what the market will bear and that at this time the banks are lending on residential, small residential complexes to medium. Um, it, it, industrial and commercial is another story. Um, in Ward 4 on Industrial Boulevard, as you mentioned, I've got somebody who was willing to acquire the property, which was a good thing, and build this, you know, multi-level building. They, they still keep telling me they don't have a tenant, but they're assured, they believe they're very confident of having a tenant. Most people wouldn't do that. They, they wouldn't be able to get the financing to do that building. And it's harder to attract commercial and industrial tenants in many instances. Definitely. Yeah, so... The property on Industrial Boulevard has a tenant. A potential tenant? Potential. potential tenant. I think they already yeah. signed a lease already. So yeah, I knew it was potential, amazing. but yeah. it wasn't a it's done, not deal. done deal yet. Right, that's right. But the building is going up. I see it every week. Yeah, yeah, it's big. Um, but... It, it's harder to attract oh, that, yeah. that kind of business. Well, a bank's not going to lend. That's right. A bank's not going to lend someone speculating on a 300,000 square foot industrial building. That's right. And so many of these projects that I'm seeing going up in the downtown area and in other parts of the city, there are smaller developers who are doing it. Yes. And so the residential model enables them to get their tax credits, their financing, and get it built. 
a bee in their bonnets. And, again, and so I do think that's a lot of why we're seeing what we're seeing. Yes, no, no doubt. But it's hopefully the commercial follows. Yes. Well, that's right, because I keep being assured that, yes, there will be pharmacies and laundromats and, and, and uh, cafes and that kind of stuff that will follow for the people who will live in all these apartment complexes. I'm not really seeing it so far, and I do, I do worry about it. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Counselor. See no other hands. Yep. Uh, right before that, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councillor Azak did ask about the abatements. Um, but would you be able to give the office number out? I don't think we've we've done that yet. I can pull it up on the phone. I don't know. Like. The, I don't know what the. Uh, That's not good. No, it's not eight nine. It's five eight zero seven one nine four. Okay. All right, perfect, thank you. I didn't, didn't mean to put you on Just the Just give spot. out his personal phone number. They can I'll call him. I'll direct line. Call yeah. him directly. Just use your cell phone, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, thank you. Counselors? Motion to establish a 1.75 ratio for FY23. Second. Second. Motion has been properly made and seconded. Um, and I'm clerk, please read the roll. Do they have to do the calculations? First, we're going to do this. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you please read the roll? Azak. Yes. D'Agostino. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Minicello. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Tavares. Yes. Texera. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. President, I move reconsideration in the hope it does not prevail. Second. Okay. Motion for reconsideration has been properly made and seconded. By hand vote, all in favor of reconsideration. All opposed? Reconsideration fails. Which will lead us to order that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Residential, 74.6539%. Commercial 16.6542, industrial 3.4011, and personal property 5.2908 for a total of 100%. The facts for this ta such classification shall be 1.75. And now we need somebody to so move moved. Up. Second. Motion has been properly made and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Azak? Yes. D'Agostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Minicello. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Tavares. Yes. Fixera. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The order is approved. You do a reconsideration. Re uh, oh. No. Oh. Reconsideration, I'm anybody? Oh, you said okay. Reconsideration in the hope it does not Second. prevail. Okay. Motion is properly made and seconded for reconsideration. All in favor of reconsideration. All opposed? Reconsideration fails. Well set. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Look at that, counselors. One of our quicker meetings. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you to the folks for coming. Thank you to the folks watching at home. Sent things in. Uh, we have no other business before us. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you next week. We are adjourned. <laughs>